Nous allons aborder We're going la to de la talk about de la modeling of climatic variability. But first, why do we talk about climatic variability? Let us look at the observed variations, how temperature has changed on the Earth's surface during the last 150 years. Obviously, there is a trend towards global warming, and researchers explain that with the increased concentration of greenhouse effect gases in the atmosphere. But there are also variations from one year to the next or one decade to the next. Now, what about the result of about 20 climatic simulations? These climatic simulations have one thing in common. They were submitted to an external forcing, external because it's external to the modelized climatic system. It may be of anthropic origin, such as the increase of uh, gas emissions into the atmosphere or aerosol emissions. It could also be of natural origin, volcanic eruptions or changes in the uh, solar radiation. These curves show the evolution of the global temperature in the observations and simulations. The simulations have in common the fact that there is a trend towards lower temperatures following uh, volcanic eruptions in the dotted line and a trend towards higher temperature after the industrial area and uh, an increase in uh, greenhouse effect gases uh, shown on the right hand side. Now, these simulations cannot be superimposed. The track, the path followed by the variability of the different models are not matching each other. This is mainly due to climatic variability. Why is the climatic system so variable? The climatic system is a complex system. It's constantly in motion, fueled by the solar energy, and there are several processes at play with different time and space scales with numerous interactions between the various components. To illustrate what I'm saying, I am showing you a video made by, the, by NASA showing temperatures on the uh, ocean surface evolving throughout the day with the direction and amplitude of winds, and those are the black lines. In practice, climatic variability is a large-scale organization. People talk about variability modalities. This is the most famous variability model, the austral oscillation and the counterpart El Niño, characterized by a uh, wider alternance of temperatures, warmer and colder than the normal temperature in the equatorial Pacific Ocean. And also, this Time series shows that alternating of warmer and colder temperatures, as was observed in the 60 last years in the equatorial Pacific, and the map showing the uh, abnormalities with uh, warmer temperatures in the eastern part of the equatorial Pacific during the winter of 97 and colder temperatures during the winter of 1998. Climatic simulations reproduce statistical characteristics of this phenomenon. For instance, here we see the uh, characteristic amplitude in temperatures modelized with a climate model at the bottom and shown with observations at the top. The climate model does simulate a maximum temperature variation in the equatorial Pacific on the eastern side and this matches the observations. Another illustration on the right hand side of the picture, you see the uh, spectrum, potential spectrum of air temperature averaged in the El Nino area according to the various climate models. And we see the simulations matching due to the fact that El Nino has maximum power during the time scales of two to seven years. And this is in compliance with the observations. However, climatic simulations have no reason to simulate the chronological sequence of events. Therefore, they have no reason to simulate a 
warmer than average winter in 1997 and colder than average winter in 1998. Climatic simulations are not in phase with the observed climatic variability. In terms of a climatic projection, i.e. when one tries to predict the climate for the next decades, depending on several forcing scenarios, internal climatic variability is a source of uncertainty. We see, for instance, that the various tracks or trajectories followed by climatic simulations constitute an area which is a source of uncertainty for decision-making people who are trying to understand what the climate will be in 2050. For the historical period for which we do have observations, it is possible to limit the model with a number of parameters based on the observations and reduce some of the uncertainty. This is the initialization technique, an emerging field for research, which is now being used for prediction of the climate for the interannual variability.